Beneath the icy waters of the southern seas lives a creature with two very different faces. We all know and love the showman, acrobat and clown. But we often ignore the darker side of the fur seal, the face of a cruel and ruthless killer. Far from its adoring fans, the wild seal remains just as impressive and its struggle for survival also deserves our applause. But out at sea, it's unlikely to raise a smile. Fur seals thrive in a wilderness of icy water called the Great Southern Ocean. Here, the swells and currents circulate continuously around the Antarctic, unimpeded by coastlines. Lost in this great body of moving water, fur seals need to find dry land to rest and reproduce. But where? The answer lies 5,000 meters below. Thousands of years ago, volcanic islands emerged from the sea to form archipelagos. Molten lava spewing from beneath the ocean crust hardened in the cold to form underwater buttresses. Over time, lava piled up and volcanoes rose to the surface. These subantarctic volcanic islands are now the only port of call for castaways in the southern oceans. Long lines of thick kelp form a belt around the coast. Below, the kelp grows like a forest, reaching up to the surface for thin rays of sunlight. But in the shadows of this labyrinth lies a terrible secret. An ocean graveyard. The bleached skeletons of penguins litter the floor. Who or what is responsible for the carnage. It's hard to imagine how a predator could kill so freely in the same place as if the victims had no escape. The victims are in fact Macaroni penguins, distinguished by their pirate hats. Along with a fur seal, they too need dry land to breed. They gather in their thousands, all confined to small outcrops of volcanic rock. Quite a feast for a predator, wily enough to catch them.
The orca, or killer whale, could be the prime suspect in the slaughter. King of the seas, they're feared by all and given a wide berth. Killer whales live and hunt in groups. But penguins fly through the water at such speed that they easily outmaneuver the eight-ton giants. It's simply too much effort for too little gain. These super predators need far larger and easier prey to feed themselves and their families. A killer whale might snatch a penguin here and there, sucking it empty like an egg, but it couldn't be responsible for so many skeletons on the ocean floor. Where else might the blame lie? Which animal is so methodical in hunting down macaroni penguins when they take to the water to feed every summer's morning? The real answer may lie closer to land, where the killing continues. The giant petrel is another suspect, and for good reason. Its mere presence is ominous. Petrels are opportunists of the first order. They're always at the scene of the crime. Petrels are the vultures of the seas. They take no risks, because they target sick and injured animals, and even dead ones. They're not hunters, but scavengers. So they, too, are beyond suspicion. That leaves the fur seals. Their colony lies conveniently close to the penguins. A four-year-old male shows great interest in the birds. After three years alone at sea, he has returned to the land of his birth. He studies their habits and timetable closely. Every day at the same time, groups of adult penguins return with bellies full to feed their young. Seals don't normally dine on penguins. They generally prefer fish, shellfish, and squid. Still, the young male bides his time at the foot of the penguin colony, staking out the passage they must use to land. Seal's pointed teeth are ideal for the job, catching and holding on to prey, but not chewing. He tears off strips of flesh by thrashing his victim about on the surface. Once he's ripped through the skin, he's able to swallow the thick layer of fat and feathers that protect the bird from the cold. Now, the bird's fat will protect him. In such glacial waters, survival depends on being well insulated. The giant petrels hasten for ringside seats to peck on leftovers. The seal doesn't welcome the company and chooses to finish his meal alone. The 
penguin's flesh satisfies the seal's need for protein. But before he's finished, he's distracted by another wave of penguins. This time, the goal is not to feed, but to play. The game is too easy on land, so the seals abandon their gruesome toy to the usual bystanders. The young male waits patiently for fresh arrivals. And he's not disappointed. The trap is set. Same place, same strategy. This time, the penguins are wise to it and head off to attempt a landing on the other side of the colony the exposed side of the island. To land here, penguins must be in sync with a wave, but waiting for the right one leaves them vulnerable to attack. As a ball. Like a spoiled child, he quickly loses interest. But the meal isn't wasted. At this table, those with the worst manners are awarded. At least petrols finish what they started. As the seal continues his carnage on the surface, petrols help keep the graveyard clean. Although the petrols missed out on the seals' unfinished business, other cleaners inhabit the bottom to take over. Ophura, amphipods, isopods, nematodes, echinodermatas, names from another world.
Many of these species of animals play a role in the cemetery, but the fur seal seems solely responsible for the full extent of the slaughter. One or two penguins might have sufficed, so why does he kill so wantonly? The wild fur seal is not the seal we know and love. reconcile the image of a captive seal with that of a wild killer? How do you explain the lust for slaughter? Have humans merely replaced the penguin with the ball? Are answers to be found in the seal's upbringing? The young male is born in an archipelago of barren rocky outcrops that could have been tossed into the sea by the hand of a giant. He came into this world more than a thousand kilometers from the nearest inhabited land. Known also as bull fur seals, or bear's heads, they like to rest on the banks of basalt rocks, pierced by cracks and caves. They were massacred for their fur a century ago. Today, they're slowly rebuilding their numbers. Our four-year-old male was born in this sheltered bay. The relentless onslaught of the sea cuts through the cliffs and creates a natural pool for young fur seals to enjoy. It's an ideal nursery for growing pups. Hundreds of them settle here to take advantage of the summer. In spite of appearances, this is summer. On one side, dominant males are distinguished by their fairy crowns. On the other side, females nurse their young. Our young male was born black as the basalt around him. He's growing steadily on his mother's milk, which isn't surprising. As an only pup, he has four teeth to choose from. He'll live on his mother's milk for 10 months, but she'll spend part of that time out at sea to hunt and enrich her milk. After birth, the mother stays by her pup for the first week, then leaves him alone in the middle of the colony. She'll be away for several days at first, and then progressively much longer periods, leaving the pup to fend for itself. Mother braves stormy seas to hunt for fish and squid. Storms spit out disoriented castaways onto unfamiliar shores like this male gentoo penguin. Lost, but certainly not alone. The on-off feeding pattern means that hungry pups grow relatively slowly. He'll gain only 10 kilograms in his first year. He'll have to put on a hundred more before he becomes a fully grown male. If the young face no direct predatory threat on the island, the slightest sign of weakness won't go altogether unnoticed. 
the giant petrel is always on the lookout for defenseless pups on the rocks. The skua, with its surgical beak, will finish off anything the petrels leave behind. A natural balance is maintained. Each species knows its place on the island. The solitary Gentoo penguin must also find its footing on these strange shores. It must look for one of its own kind. Left alone, young seals have little else to do but scratch for parasites in their fur. Adult males don't babysit. In fact, they play no role at all in bringing up their offspring. So the pups have only themselves for support. They form their own nurseries. The nursery acts as their first school. They learn to walk with their overlong flippers and take their first dip in the baby pool. They might encounter mild threats along the way. Gradually, they build up the self-confidence they need to survive and in spite of being self-taught, learn quickly. But one thing they still rely on is mother's milk. When the mothers return, their cries signal feeding time to see the pups through another few days. But finding your own offspring isn't that simple. Fur seals have perfect vision underwater, but on land, they're a bit short-sighted, so mother and pup call each other. A female will only feed her own. One last identity check, this time through smell, and the young male can settle in. No familiar voices call the gentoo. So he decides to head off and look for a more friendly beach. Growing up in captivity is quite different. Mothers never leave their pups. A warm teat is always available. Pups lead pampered lives. No need for nurseries here. They learn everything in a private pool with their mothers. Back to reality in the wild. A few months later. Self-education in the nursery turns to more serious challenges. Now that the young can cover 100 meters on land in a minute, they must learn to swim the same distance in 10 seconds. Young seals are naturally cautious. They stay in the shallows until they're brave enough for the deep end. Here, they discover the natural advantages of their shape. They're made for water and not land. 
understanding the forces of currents and waves, negotiating the kelp, twisting, leaping, and somersaulting become vital skills in the wild. And practicing is great fun. When they lose interest in each other, there are other playmates to engage. A lonely petrel, for instance. The game here is to get as close as possible without getting pecked. Emboldened by playing in groups, they throw caution to the wind to test their courage more and more. The spirit of competition pushes every individual seal to do better. They chase the giant petrel into the inlet. The bird is cornered without enough room for takeoff. The terrifying sight of this fin might just give the petrel a lift. A whale this size cannot possibly enter the inlet. It must find the gap in the seal's fortress. Killer whales are particularly partial to fur seals because of their high energy fat. The young and inexperienced seals instinctively distance themselves from the sudden appearance of a stranger in their pool, even though they've never seen the likes of a killer whale before. It's not just one whale, but a whole family. But they find the play pool empty, a missed opportunity for the petrels too. The exercise is not entirely fruitless. The whales use the pool to shelter from stormy seas and relax in the soothing forests of kelp. In marine theme parks, killer whales are contained by steel gates. No opportunity here to taunt their neighbors. The young play in complete safety. Call it training, but in this easy environment, the goal is not survival, but entertainment. As the young male puts on weight, his head resembles more and more that of a bear. His whiskers grow into a moustache, and his coat changes colour. Molting exposes a handsome cream-coloured chest. 
sport now includes sparring to test new coats and sharp canines. As he's about to enter his second year, aggression increases. In a few weeks, the young male will be weaned and leave the protection of the pool to strike out alone. He won't return for another three or four years. At the same latitude, cousins of the fur seals also venture out to sea alone for the first time. Sea dog, cat, wolf, lion, bear, tiger, cow, boar, monk. Sailors have called these pinnipeds, the flippered family, all kinds of names down the ages. Young Patagonian sea lions are members of the same large family. Like fur seals, they leave the colony when they're a year old to explore the shallows before heading out to the open sea. They too are inquisitive and playful by nature. But this is where games end and real life begins. They must survive on their own and find food for themselves. That means calming down and listening. Listening to the sea and picking up movements and vibrations in the shadows. The group of fish is silent but every movement vibrates outwards. The sea lion's long whiskers receive the signals. The hairs are filled with nerves which pick up disturbances in the water. Sea lions locate their prey without seeing or hearing. But the grouper has its own line of defense. Gills and fins armed with spines that are deployed directly at the mouth of the enemy. The sea lion needs to find the grouper's weak spot. Its belly. This young male still has much to learn. Even when sardines fall from the sky, eating without fingers presents a challenge. In this colorful palace, hunting is a thing of the past. Why bother? The young sea lions now leave coastal waters behind them for the unknown. They're ready to confront a new world full of new faces and learn a thing or two from the masters of strategy, the dusky dolphin. Two meters long, these speed demons are actually distant cousins of sea lions. The water glitters with fish scales, no doubt because the dolphins have just finished feeding. If the air is teeming with life, something must be going on below. Perhaps the sea lions aren't so late after all. The dolphin leader signals it's time to dive. The sea lions stay on the surface, perhaps a little confused by the dolphin's sudden disappearance.
This is the dolphin's menu, a great shoal of anchovies. Little do the sea lions know, a hundred meters up on the surface. Sea lions still wait in vain for the dolphin's return. After repeated attacks, the anchovies scatter. So the dolphins use another tactic. They blow air bubbles to sow panic and force the anchovies to regroup. The birds follow the action. Finally, the sea lions catch up and enjoy a live ball of fish. wasted on them. Unlike the dolphins, these young sea lions simply aren't organized enough to take advantage. They seem more intent on playing than feeding. But practice makes perfect, and the experience will stand them in good stead for the future. One sea lion seems to want to claim the ball for himself. But the privilege is short-lived. Friends become rivals. Sea lions show themselves for what they are, individuals and opportunists. As a result, they lose the ball. A wandering albatross means we're on the high seas. The fur seals have no doubt experienced similar adventures to the sea lions. Our young male has gained considerable weight and is self-sufficient in the vast southern ocean. He's been alone at sea for three years. If he's survived, it's because he's been able to adapt to new situations. Longline fishermen have been coming here for 10 years. Each line runs 20 kilometers long, equipped with thousands of hooks. The longliners, as they're called, are after a kind of Antarctic cod known as toothfish. And every evening, the fishermen lower the lines baited with mackerel. The activity attracts marine mammals from far afield especially killer whales. They'll wait all night until dawn when the lines are hoisted. Killer whales know the routine. 
They stay out of sight until the moment is right. In stormy seas, even one of the planet's greatest predators can't miss out on an opportunity like this. The toothfish are so abundant that the predators put their differences aside. Seal has perfected the technique of tearing the fish apart to swallow them even in the face of so many marauding birds. White chin petrels, cape petrels, giant petrels, and albatrosses clamor for a share, but the seal remains undaunted. His coat has thickened and serves him well in the southern chill. But perhaps the greatest challenge for a seal in a region aptly named the Roaring Forties is the weather itself. Storms whip up waves like liquid mountains. One low pressure system after another drives hurricane force winds to unimaginable strengths with no land to soften the blow. Amphibious animals like seals try to avoid these storms. But sudden squalls inevitably take their toll. Young seals might swallow too much water and risk exhaustion and drowning. The sea that took their lives spits them back onto shore. forties to this. Life here is a pushover. Water and ball skills entertain wildly enthusiastic audiences, especially children. And the more complex the routine, the more the stars of the palm tree circuit thrive. For a while, at least. Relax everybody, take a breath, listen what I say I'm gonna take you for a trip if you let us stray Up to the stars, I'll take you by my hand You're no gate crasher, I'll take you to another land Feel it, get in, we're gonna rock the place now Get in the train, let us keep the groove flow so cool Like a summer breeze blowing, believe, believe Feel the hype growing, no matter if you're black, white, red, yellow or green Step on it, ready, aim, brain at the scene You, you gotta find out what it feels like Don't waste time, break through you better turn off the fear, every dance with atmosphere, sucking on your brain, on your soul. Do you really need a hole in your head? I'm gonna take you back where you should have been. Let's realize that the dream says no. I got enough hope, but I'ma fight my way through, even if it phases you. So strange to make a better world go. Seals don't always need human handlers to perform. Their tricks merely reflect natural ability. It's seven years since the young male left his mother, seven long winters at sea, gaining both weight and confidence. And now something draws him back to the colony every summer.
Underwater performances serve a far more serious purpose in the wild. They're vital for survival. After the storm, when the swell sweeps the coast, seals let rip for anyone who cares to watch. Beware of all the parasites coming in all forms. Wolf dressed as she clothes and uniforms. Where it's shaking your hands without even knowing no particular conscience. Tell me what they're doing. Don't want to make you think of a lyrical Castro. Just want to remind you that there's something to live for. So if you drive away, you never get far. surf session, a male may catch the attention of a female. He's now mature and ready to form a harem and become a dominant male. of his birth opens up, spewing lava into the sea. At 11 years old, the dominant male could preside over a harem of up to 15 females. After so many years of solitude, danger and cold, he's earned the ultimate reward, the right to pass on his genes, but with only three more summers to do it. His hold on the harem will weaken and he'll die of exhaustion trying to fend off other male rivals. The high point of his life heralds his end. Male fur seals struggle throughout their lives in order to become dominant. Penguin hunting is part of this preparation. It may seem cruel, but this sport allows male seals to hone their skills. And have fun. Fur seals are particularly playful animals. Ultimately, stalking and ripping penguins to shreds gives them what it takes to mature and reproduce. The grim legacy of the seal's education lies hidden at the bottom of the southern seas.
everybody take a breath, listen what I say. I'm gonna take you for a trip if you let us stray up to the stars. I'll take you by the hand, you're no gate crasher. I'll take you to another land. Feel it, get in it. We're gonna rock the place now, get in the trend. Let us get the groove flow so cool. Like a summer breeze blowing. Believe, believe, feel the hype growing. No matter if you're black, white, red, yellow, or green. Step on it, ready, aim, brain at the scene. You, you gotta find out what it feels like. Don't waste time, break through to the right side.